Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, before we get too far in, if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button down below, that helps out a lot. I also love it if you leave comments. A while back I did a ring uh, in this uh, kind of the brutalist style, which is sort of post-World War II uh, industrial looking kind of uh, jewelry. And I thought I'd do another one of those today. I was really pleased with how that one came out. Um, this is kind of an homage to another version of Brutalist jewelry I saw online uh, from I think the 70s. But I liked it and this is uh, going to be sort of similar to it. And I'm going to use a little whiskey quartz that I found. It's a little faceted whiskey quartz. It has kind of a checkerboard top. I think it'll kind of add some sparkle to it. Before we get started on this project, I need to thank some groups of people. Uh, I have some new patrons over on Patreon. I wanted to thank Foster G and Stephen and Carrie C. Thank you all for signing up. I really appreciate your support. Uh, I also appreciate the support of those ongoing members of Patreon over there. Thank you for creating such a nice community. I really enjoy it. The other group I wanted to thank is my YouTube subscribers. Uh, you're probably one of these. If not, you should be. But uh, you're a great group of people. I've appreciated all of the kind words and the financial contributions like the Buy Me A Coffees. That really helps with supplies and stuff. Uh, thank you so much for all your support. I appreciate it. I think we're at about 8,500 subscribers now, but I keep losing track of how many I have now. So that's pretty impressive, though, and I really appreciate all of that support. So thanks a lot. All right, let's get started on this uh, Brutalist ring. This is my design idea book, and anymore I draw stuff up before I start my creation process. And I find it helps me to come out with a better result. Um, so this is basically what the ring's going to look like. I have a little whiskey quartz, like I said. It's basically a citrine that's a little bit on the brown side. So I think that'll look pretty in there. Um, I drew this from, from the side without the projecting pieces, but these pieces are going to project out from the sides on both sides. And they'll be kind of randomly and uh, placed and patterned uh, in different ways. I haven't decided how I'm going to pattern yet, pattern them yet, but uh, I changed my mind about these side pieces here holding it together. But I'm going to have a bottom uh, piece between the two sides. Um, and there will be some kind of connection up top here too, to make it sturdy. So this, the base of the, the band itself is going to be two pieces of 18 gauge sheet, which I cut out two pieces like this that are big enough. We'll have to saw out a circle and then shape the rest of them. Um, I'll probably hook these two together and uh, tape them together so I can get symmetrical circles cut through both of them. Um, and I think basically this is going to be in four steps. This is going to be making the, the band out of those two pieces. And then we'll be adding the decor on the sides here after we make some of those. Connecting the two pieces together and then creating and mounting a prong setting on top. These other two pieces up here I think I'm going to cut 10 gauge square into cubes and then texture you know, all the sides that are showing and solder them down just to kind of frame this prong setting. I don't know how many prongs I'm going to put on here, maybe four or six, it depends. We'll see how things are going today. <laughs> if my prong skills are good today or not. Alright, so uh, these are going to consist of probably 14 gauge, 12 gauge, 10 gauge wires, some flattened a little bit so they're more like rectangular and um, they're going to stick out to different distances so it's relatively random. It's going to look like little pillars coming out to either side is my my vision anyway. Uh, the stone is a 6x8 with a checkerboard cut on top and I'm going to make this about a 7 to a 7.5. That's what that circle should be about. So I think first let's connect these two together and I'm probably going to put masking tape to put them together. Actually use the template circles. It's kind of handy sometimes. I'm not sure where this came from, but this one measures to about a size 7 on the mandrel. This one, when I draw on the inside of it, will be pretty close to that. And I want to leave myself a little room on the bottom here to work with. So you can see the actual edge there. I'm 
try to get kind of centered. That looks pretty close. Alright, so our next step is going to be just to punch a hole through it and then we'll saw it out with the saw. You can watch my <laughs> mediocre sawing skills. So let's go over there and do that. I just put a little dimple in there so that I wouldn't um, jump around too much with the drill bit anyway. One of my true talents is breaking these little bits when I drill. <laughs> I think I got it without breaking one. Wonders never cease. Okay, so I'm going to take the Dremel and I'm going to neaten that up so it's nice and round and smooth. And then we'll go back and we'll start thinking about shaping the rest of it. So let's peel this back apart. Now that's pretty close. So now we got to kind of round these corners a little bit. So I want these to taper in just a tiny bit. It's kind of like that. Okay, and I'm going to file those inwards that way too. I think I might tape up this bottom again like I just did so it doesn't move much and maybe across the middle so that doesn't move as well. So we'll just spend some time taping that down. <clears throat> okay, I got those mostly cleaned up and I cut them a little bit shorter so that they matched up closer to what I had drawn. And I was thinking while I was off camera about the order of things that I want to do. And since I'm going to have a bunch of vertical decorations sticking up on both sides, the less I have to do after that, the less likely I'll have any of that stuff shift on me or anything. So I think I'm going to solder these two together first. And in order to do that, I cut myself a piece for the bottom here. If I have it stick out just a little bit, I can file it flush. And then these two, kind of want to put right here and right there. <laughs> These are all going to move when I spray some flux on them anyway, but <laughs> I'll have to readjust them. Those are about right though. So, um, if you've never been to my channel before, I use hard silver sheet solder for pretty much everything. And I use Mighty Flux, which is a liquid flux that I spray on. My torch is a Smith, uh, hand, or it used to be called the Handy Heat. Now it's called the Smith Silversmith. It's an acetylene air torch. I really like it. Um, so, to start with, I'm going to solder these to this side, and then we'll see if we can't get this positioned solder this one on top of that. So let's dribble a little flux on there. Now 
dry that flux. Pretty close. Okay, so let's cut a little bit of solder. I do what's called pick soldering most of the time, and it's where you pick up a little bit of solder on the end of your soldering pick. If you're interested in learning how to do that, I'll put a link to my video up there. It's a really good skill to have. It's improved my skills immensely when I learned how to do that. So check that out. This is uh, a project that likely is going to involve some a little bit of uh, intricate soldering, and so it may not be the best for a beginner. Uh, it's good to push your limits, but you don't want to try something that's too advanced for you because you get frustrated. And I don't want anybody to give up just because of a little frustration. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm, it's called sweat soldering. And I'm going to pre-melt a little bit of solder on the upper part of this, these ones that I just put on, so that I'll just be able to set that one down on top of it and reheat it till it flows. Spread on a little bit. I'll put a couple of pieces on this bottom one. Maybe three. And go flatten out a little bit. So let's uh, spray some flux on this side of this one and dry it flip it over and position it. I may put a little spacer in between these just so it doesn't sag at all. Well, that's pretty close. Let's give that a go and see how it turns out. just to make sure we get a good solid seam there. Let's cool that off and see how it looks. Okay, let's clean up the top a little bit. You could use your miter vise jig if you have one of those for this, if you prefer. Well, I'm not sure how it is where you're at in the, in the, in the world, but right now, Colorado here, when I got up this morning, it was 
negative 3 degrees and negative 26 degree wind chill. <laughs> it's pretty chilly. It's supposed to get to negative 14 or negative 15 without the wind chill tonight. So, so I'm going to leave that aside for a little bit. I gathered up some, some various pieces of square wire as well as some stuff that I've run through the rolling mill to flatten it out a little bit. This and this are the same, basically. Pretty close. There's some 14-gauge uh, square. This is a little bit skinnier 14-gauge. I think this is a piece that I used on the original Brutalist one. I'll probably use some of that. Here's some just regular square 14-gauge, or 12-gauge, I think. And this is 10-gauge. That might be 12-gauge, too. One of the things about the Brutalist pieces I see, they use a lot of texture on them. So we're going to texture some of these. There's multiple different kinds of textures. <laughs> I was thinking one of them, I have this little texturing stamp. Let's try doing that on some 12 and see what it looks like. I also have this texturing hammer that I use once in a while. It's got some different kinds of heads on it. Do it on the ends as well. Try using the peen on here. This is just like an I stamp, like the letter I. <laughs> Okay, I got a few to start here. So, let's see if we can't solder some of those on. Let's see how it goes. I believe I'm going to be using a magnesium block, which is what this thing is. It's more of a soft surface, you can kind of like push things into so they don't move too much. I want some going vertical, some horizontally, some square. So I've cut and filed a bunch of these little pieces in different textures. And I'm going to start placing them on this. So I think uh, first, in order to do it, the easiest way to do it would be to pre-meld a little bit of solder on the bottom of each of these and plop them on there where I want them as we go and try to keep them from tipping over. <laughs> we'll see how I do. Start with one of these longer ones. I 
guess I need to flux this too. Huh? That turned out okay. I may trim some of them down to different lengths and then retexture the ends, but we'll see. I think for the next step, let's push these in. So they're unlikely to go anywhere. And we'll try and do the other side. that time. Time to make a setting for this stone. So I'm just going to toss that in the pickle for a while. And let's make a little prong setting for this guy. So I'm going to make a couple of loops out of 18 gauge round wire that are oval loops that uh, well, the first one will be just smaller than the girdle and the second one will be uh, about the size to where it would just almost fit inside of the other ring, but doesn't quite. I have a whole video on how to make this sort of setting. If you're interested in seeing that video, I'll put a link right there for you. It's just making a basket setting, a basic basket setting. Probably good. I'm going to try and get it a little, this is more of an elongated oval, so I'm going to try and make this a little bit more elongated. That's kind of what I like. Yeah, about there.
<laughs> I didn't heat it very evenly and it jumped to one side of the gap, so I had to kind of paint it over a little bit. Okay, I'm going to try and find one. This is, there's a number of different ways to do this. This is the way I'm going to do it today. Um, if I can find a flash sort of spot on one of these magnesium blocks. There's a flattish sort of spot. I think I'm just going to stick four pieces uh, at the points where I want those uh, prongs to attach to the lower ring. And this, these will be the prongs. So we'll just cut. This is one of the reasons magnesia blocks are handy, is because you can poke things into them. If you wanted to, you could make these two staple shaped pieces. We're just going to push them down into the path here instead of four individuals. The biggest thing about this that we want is we want the, the rings to be parallel and pretty close together. So, I need to get an idea how far down I want this to sit. I want it to be pretty close like that. And so I probably will make a little mark with a marker and try and keep them all parallel and then I'm going to file a little bit of a notch on the inside so that it'll kind of catch that ring. I like using when I'm doing stuff like this, using the chain nose pliers to hold it because it's a little stronger as far as holding a little tiny ring like this, versus the tweezers which kind of doesn't hold it in place very easily. So I'm going to try and get it level and symmetrical like that. That's pretty good. Okay, we're going to try and keep everything kind of in that position. Push this down in there again, if I could do that without messing anything up. And then we should be able to pick those ones now. Clumsy. Keeping the heat low is important when you're doing this kind of a setting. 
those wires sitting up top are vulnerable and will melt before you know it. <laughs> I learned to have a good sense of humor about it because I occasionally mess them up. So I cut the bottom of that, uh, those wires that were sticking out the back, and I filed it flat. And then I trimmed these down much shorter because I don't need them to be that long anymore. And now I have to attach this on here somehow. And I think I was originally going to put some textured blocks next to it, but I think that may look a, may look a little bit cluttered. So I think I'm just going to put that in the center of that and solder it down. The trick is. How do we get this soldered on without anything else falling off, right? So, and there's a couple of challenges here. One is that, one is that that's not straight. <laughs> I'll have to put it like this, I think. Um, and this thing on the bottom here has a lot more mass than this thing up here. So it's going to take a lot more heating to get this up to temperature. The other thing is, um, this is capable of falling apart if you get too much heat on that before it's ready to solder down there, because you need it to, to flow on the bottom, but not really flow up the top here. So I think on this one, I may, uh, I may chicken out and just do easy on this last one. But uh, in order to keep things in place. I was thinking, what if we sandwiched it kind of between two of these. Oops, let me do that without having it fall apart. I was brave I would use hard for this one too but um, it's getting towards the end of the night and I'm a little tired <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to do it I don't want to ruin it at this stage I prefer a uh, hard solder because it polishes it a little better most people use all different kinds of solder throughout the thing and I just use hard most of the time So I'm going to sweat a little bit up there, some of this stuff. said that the prong setting up there is pretty vulnerable so I really need to get a lot of that heat down below it first so I can get that solder liquefied on the top of the band so if I'm careful I can not reflow that hard solder that's on the top there
I think I got it. Well, I think we got it on there. It doesn't look like anything came off. <laughs> it's always time for that to change when we're polishing it. <laughs> this one's going to be kind of a bear to polish, probably, because it's so jagged. So I'm going to let this pickle for quite a while before I polish it. I may go make some dinner, I think. pretty much polished up on our little brutalist ring. I, uh, I had kind of spread these prongs a little bit and stuck our little whiskey quartz in there. And then I measured, or I kind of eyeballed it really, but I filed a little bit thinner area on the prong right where the girdle of the stone goes. And once that's sitting down nice, we can start pushing these over a little bit. Actually go corner to corner. This one a little bit. This one a little bit. Looks like it's sitting pretty straight. Push that down a little. 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 That down a little. Then I'm going to trim these off just a little bit so that I don't bump into each other. push them down the rest of the way. Again, it's always best to do opposites, I think. Alright, then I usually cut them off about midway down what normally would be the girdle facets. So about like that. so much on this one because it's a uh, checkerboard top. Right. And then I will take my file. I get asked about this quite a bit because I usually don't film it, but I'm just going to take my uh, file and round that very carefully so that the prong kind of tapers into the stone. Use my finger to kind of guide me so I don't damage the stone or anything. And if I want them to be pointy, do it like this. But basically that's what I'm going to do until it curves nicely into the stone and then doesn't catch on my fingers. And then I'll use the Dremel to kind of clean that up with a fine polishing wheel right up here. So that's basically what we're going to do. Okay, well I'll finish that up off camera before I take pictures. But basically that's kind of what I was shooting for. It's ended up sitting up a little higher than it did on the picture, but I think that's okay. It should really stand out and be kind of a showpiece. So, all right, well, we'll finish that up, take better pictures, and put them at the end. Well, that was Brutalist Ring number two. I hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, I like making uh, stuff that is sort of um, aggressively geometric, and this one turned out that way. So I hope you liked it. If you did, make sure to hit the like button before you go. I appreciate that kind of uh, support that way. As well as comments and suggestions for videos, those are great. You might want to take a moment and check out the playlist page. I've split up all of my videos now that we have like 270 videos. Uh, 
split them up into different playlists like beginner, intermediate, advanced, as well as things like rings, pendants, earrings. So if you're looking for a specific type of project that makes the navigation of my uh, YouTube page or my YouTube channel a little bit easier. So check that out and then maybe subscribe. Love to have you. Uh, the other thing is, hit the video description down below for some relevant links, like the Buy Me A Coffee link, which helps me with supplies. It's basically a cash infusion for me. There's a link to my website, which you should check out. There's lots of jewelry for sale over there, and there's usually a monthly special going on. You can visit my merch store if you wanted to buy one of those nice design idea books I showed you, or some of the other merch that I have available. And finally, uh, there's a link to Patreon if you want to check that out. So, Again, thanks for watching. Take care. Happy silversmithing.